All right. I'm here with Courtney Nance. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Pretty well. Thanks for coming on. Um, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Courtney Nance. I am born and bred in Wichita, Kansas. I went to school at K-State, but came back because I can't escape this place. Um, <laughs> I'm in love with Wichita. Um, like you're in love with that off and on relationship that you have. Um, <laughs> you fall in and out of love all the time. Um, but I saw I saw kind of a gap. I was like, man, I love the music scene, grew up on it. Um, I would love for people to know about it. Um, and I would love for the artists kind of to be heard in a way that's not, you just walked into a bar or a place and you're like, oh, they're kind of cool. And you walk away. Sure. I wanted to provide a platform where you can really like connect with them. So yeah, that's where the Yada 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 show was born. I Perfect. should have said that earlier, but. <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, and I'll, I'll give a little intro before this. So don't worry about that. Um, mm -hmm. So the music scene, um, you grew up in Wichita. What was the music scene like growing up? Has it changed? What is it like right now? Oh, gosh. Okay, so I tell everyone this. It's my favorite thing. Um, basically, I grew up going to Mead's Corner, mm -hmm. RIP. RIP. Such a loss, such a loss. But I grew up going there to like shows and I just fell in love with live music. Um, I was, I grew up very um, Christian conservative. Mm -hmm. And so my parents did not allow me to go out really at all. Um, it was like, who are you going with? Where are you going? Who's driving? those mm -hmm. kind of parents, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bless their soul. Um, I'm sure they kept me out of trouble. I was a really good kid. But the one thing they let me do is because I love music so much. They're like, you can go to Meet's Corner. Yeah, I'd show them. I was like, this is the show, you know? That's awesome, like, man. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> so they're like, okay, you can go. And I used, to, that was the only way I could stay out late is if I went to shows at Meet's Corner. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, obviously I fell in love and it was a place where like all ages could go to. So and it was just a really cool community. The travel guide is one that I will shout out because the travel guide is where, where I fell in love. Um, they still make music and they're incredible too. Okay. But yeah. That's kind of wow. where it's where it started. The music scene now though. Yeah. Yeah. What's different? Oh my gosh. Well, you have to think about the factors of COVID. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we always come back to that yeah, you have to. word, right? You have to. Basically, I mean, we went through a time where it was like, uh, Yada Show was started kind of, at, I, I hate saying the end of COVID because it, it's never, you know, it's right. not really over. It's here forever. Yeah. But people accepting it, you know, once people kind of accepted it and we started opening up um, right before that is when we started filming. So we were filming with, we had masks on when we started filming um, six feet apart. We were yeah, yeah. sanitizing everything. That's why in um, the first season, you can see this long table between me and the guest sure. because we had to be that far right, apart right. Yeah, to yeah. make sure everyone was safe. Yeah. And like vaccines are required. Um, I'm pro vaccine. I'll say that. Um, but I'm also anti hate. If you don't have it, it's not my business, you know, Fair. but basically it started with needs corner and all that stuff. And then now I don't know with COVID it's blown up. I think a really good example of that is, um, you know, how you got bored during COVID mm -hmm. you got bored during yeah, the lockdown. Of course. Yep. So bottle cap daydream, love them. Love those, love those babies they are like seven, 16 to 19, I think. So uh -huh. young, they got bored and they lived close to each other. And so they would go over, you know, would sneak over visit and they started, they never played music before and they started playing music. Interesting. And it went very well, <laughs> like very well. And they started a band um, and they're actually, they're about to start touring, but their first show was right before they got on my show. Um, simply because the, one of the guys, Cody Lonergan, helps me put on my show. Mm -hmm. At the time, he was over at a bar that I won't mention. Um, but he uh, discovered them, basically. I was like, hey, we have to have them on the show. And I was like, nice. dude, I don't know. Like, they're not very established. I don't, they're, you know, I was, sure. I was really hesitant. Um, just because I'm like, oh, well, I like to, you know, uplift people who, who are committed to their craft. You know right, what I mean? Right. And people who are very passionate about what they do. Yeah. And then I saw what they do. And if you know how quickly they went from never playing an instrument to playing shows, you'll see it's, it's definitely, it's a passion and it's something I'm, that they were okay. supposed to do. I need you to should look them up. up. Yeah. I'm not familiar. What was the name? Bottle cap daydream. Look yeah. them up. They are yeah. one. We, I mean, we have an interview with them. So go yeah, to yeah, um, the yada, yada, yada yeah. show, Yeah. but they are one, they're incredibly cool kids Two, They're just very talented and seeing them grow already. Cause I feel like, I mean, you remember being like 16 to 19 you grow every second you yeah, grow it's crazy a yeah. crazy amount and they just picked up a new skill and then went with it like that's incredible that's I, so cool 
Yeah, I think, and that's, I think I mean, everybody wanted to make the COVID, the lockdown, the pandemic period, like that productive to like actually <laughs> learn a new skill and stuff, but they actually did yes. it. Literally, yeah, which I, I wish I could say the same. I mean, I feel like during the pandemic, quick caveat, caveat, yeah. Um, I feel like during the pandemic, everyone was like, oh, I got so sad. I'm an extrovert through and through. And that was the first time I had to be alone for a while. Sure. Oh gosh, I was great. I, I was like, I'm so like the pandemic was a blessing for me and like Slow low key besides bit. obviously the awful stuff that happened. Right. Purely the law, I would say not the pandemic, the bl- the lockdown was a blessing for me. Right. Because it made me have to sit there and be like, oh, I can't go anywhere. I just have to hang out with myself. And that's kind of where, yeah, I mean, that's how I genuinely, if I'm going to be very honest, that's where I got the confidence to be able to start the show. Yeah. If you'd have talked to me a few years ago. I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be like, why would anyone want to listen to me talk? <laughs> right. oh, no, I get that part of it. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. that all the time. Um, what was there like a, a North Star? Was there, I, I guess we'll talk about the, the show itself in a minute, but it okay. kind of has like a cool structure. Like you interview somebody, you uh, make a, was it make some food, make a drink, and then there's like a music act. And mm-hmm. you, we can talk about how that's changed or evolved, but was there like, we want to be like a certain talk show or something like that? Or are you just like, I love all these elements. I'm going to put these together and put together a cool show. I really love that question because when we started out, I was with, um, I remember being at the Vagabond downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I love that all of my ideas and um, everything, even though I'm like, oh, Wichita's, I go back and forth on my love for it. Mm-hmm. But everything lately I mean it's spawned from um really like Wichita meeting places Meets Corner obviously was the yeah. birthplace but then the Vagabonds kind of like the new one Vagabond's I was with cool. my friend oh it's, it's a great it's a great space because the daytime you have a crowd the nighttime you have a completely different crowd mm-hmm. like I've seen uh, crazy stuff there <laughs> <laughs> but in the best way possible sure. but I was there one night um with my friend Ryan Cruz he goes by his um rapper name is TVMA Mm-hmm. he's wonderful very talented uh, I was with him because I actually graduated with a journalism degree but I did social media marketing mm-hmm. um really I mean I loved it in a sense but kind of got bogged down with uh you know corporate yeah. stuff yeah yeah you know you know how it goes I know and how so it goes. I, I got bogged down and um I just I loved helping my friends and they knew that I had the talent for it um or not even talent, but the education for it. So mm-hmm. I would sit down and he wanted to plan his album release, which is crazy because it's now happening. Yeah. Why it's so cool to see it happening. But we sat down and he was telling me, I basically asked him, I was like, hey, if I'm gonna do this, can you tell me about why you do this? Or, you know, what inspired the name TVMA? Right. All of that. And he sat down and told me, and it was a really, really beautiful story about um he he's TVMA because that's um. Can I say, yeah, I can say this. He said it before. Okay, I had to make sure. I was like, am I, sure. am I divulging? But no, he said it before. Basically, it was a thing where he um, bonded with his father. Like they bonded over watching TV together. It was like a thing, you know, a timely thing. Every mm-hmm. night they'd sit down, watch something, you know, talk, bond over it. Yeah. And so TVMA kind of became like his thing. And that's where album was born and all that stuff. And so while he was telling me this story, I was like, man, I was like, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be cool if we could just like, I wish the marketing could just be this like what we're talking about right now I wish there's a way to like compile that and tell everyone because the passion right. alone that you show isn't that like it's so captivating I was like how do you record a conversation and he goes <laughs> like a like a podcast and I was like you just invented something what <laughs> I was like whoa whoa hold on and then uh, me and him we kind of finished went to the back we were sitting in the front under the street and we went to the back and he kind of mentioned like oh yeah Courtney's gonna start a podcast and I was like no I'm not gonna do that's that's stupid that's silly and then everyone else was like yeah you should do that and I was like what and we're drinking you know like it's like a very chill environment an environment where ideas are born and people are like do it and you're like yeah I'm gonna do it right now but I was very cautious I was like dude no one's gonna want to hear me talk and they were like bro how many people do you know at this bar right now and I was like I know almost everyone. And they were like, I think a few people will listen to you talk. For sure. Yeah. It was very, very eye-opening going back to the confidence thing too. I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. Maybe, maybe it would be cool. Cause I, I love connecting with people. I love talking to people. So yeah, just that night of the vagabond is kind of where it all, that was, that was my North star. And I think Ryan Cruz for that as much as I can. So I mentioned his name, go follow TV and make, listen to his new album. It's sick. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we, I've, uh, didn't know his real name. I think I've seen his real name, but we've talked on Instagram a couple of times. So it's funny that. that you mentioned that. Um, 
I guess before we get straight into the show, um, which I do want to talk a lot about, are there <laughs> what are the what are the struggles of the people in the music scene? Like what what do they need help with? Um, what can we help with? Like I know how mm -hmm. hard it can be, like in the music, I mean in any industry nowadays, but like in the music industry, especially when stuff like COVID throws curveballs, but what what do the people in the music industry need help with? Mm, specifically the Wichita music industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't speak for the full one. Sure, but... yeah, Wichita music <laughs> industry specifically, yeah. Gosh, I have so many shout outs. Um, so a big thing, and I even, I ad I interviewed um, Ad Adam Hartkey from mm -hmm. um, yep. Hartkey. Yeah, listen to that one, yeah. Yes, so he, he spoke on it a lot. And I also interviewed, it's not out yet, but Glass Age, uh, Jeremy Spring. That'll okay. be on the new season. Watch out for it. Nice. He talks about it as well. Um, I like to refer to these people because I want to make it clear. I am not a musician. I dabble with stuff, but I'm not, sure. I'm not going and playing shows. I just, I have a love for it and I mm -hmm. appreciate it and I want to uplift them. So talking about, it's kind of hard for me because even though I throw shows, um, I'm even behind the scenes at wave. I love working with them. I, it's hard to talk on without crossing boundaries. So I'm going to be very careful with my words here. Sure. kind of want to, sorry, it's a long preface. No, basically it's, it's a combination of a lot of things, but beyond capitalism and not having enough money, um, paying artists, if you want to be entertained in any sense, they need to be paid because as much fun it is it playing gigs is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like, look at them. It's obviously very fun. It's also work yeah. just as, you know, I love doing my show. It's work. You love doing Wichita life ICT. Yeah. bro that's work yeah. it's a lot of work and you need like we have to be especially these days you need to be paid for your work and so if you see it like the scene died for a little bit it's because no one was getting paid no one was being you know appreciated to be honest yeah. i say that as the same thing it's my biggest thing with yada fest is i had to make sure every single person was paid that was my biggest deal i was like i want to make sure they're paid fairly and then at the end i even had i had one band kind of come to me and they were like hey we need a little bit more. And I was like, I didn't budget for that. And we already decided on this thing. So I can't do that. And it broke my heart. And so this year, um, I'm already planning it. And yeah. I reached out to that band and I said, Hey, how, can you, can you partner with me and show me how we can do this better? Yeah, Cause that's great. there's no, yeah, there's no way to learn and grow without being like, Hey, maybe I messed up. Maybe, you know, I apologize. How do I do it better this time? You know, how do I support you? And so I think the biggest thing is just venues, uh, bar owners, uh, bar managers, connect with them and ask them what you can do better. I know it's hard and it feels, I don't know, a lot of egos out here, you know, we all have egos, but mm -hmm. it makes everyone, it makes the whole experience better. Think about any job you've had. If you have a good manager that listens to you, bro, that job, that job's pretty sick, you know, mm -hmm. like it's going to be, is it going to be work? It's going to be hard. Yes. But if I listen to, it makes it so much better. So I think just listen to the artists when they say stuff. Another one is just, I'm going to piggyback what Adam Harkey said in my interview, um, tour, get out there. Uh, I had, I guess I'll say it. Yeah. I had to reschedule Yada Fest. I had a date in mind. Reschedule is kind of a hard because like I have a date and I started talking mm -hmm. to people and the best problem, all of my people were on tour during that date, which is, isn't that amazing? That like is amazing, yeah. it's even including bottle cap they weren't even a band like right <laughs> months before right. I interviewed them. You know what I mean? Or a year before, excuse me. So seeing them tour, that's how you get your name out. Um, if you go, I keep talking about Adam, but Adam's been killing it. Um, yeah. The heart keys, both of them, honestly, they, um, gosh, they started this thing. I wish I could explain a little bit more. I'll say it very briefly. Basically they partner with a bunch of other venues, mm -hmm. um, across the country and they do kind of a streamline, um, touring is really difficult and you can get screwed over very, very easily. Um, it's not like some of it is venues taking advantage of you, but a lot of it's just, you know, where's the money going. And right. if you don't know how to stand, you know, if you go up and they're like, Hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks. And you don't know how to be like, Hey, this is what we need. If you don't have that skill, you'll get screwed over. And a lot of these, like, younger bands they don't know anything and so i think at, at heart i'm gonna say heart keys now sorry mm -hmm. um but the heart keys are so wonderful they they teamed up with they did save our stages which yeah. literally saved wave and all these other venues across the country mm -hmm. and then two they started this thing where it's like hey if you you have like a pipeline of support and so we're going to help you along the way so you have this tour you have these connections so I've been talking way too much, but I, I love this subject so much. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And I'm interviewing you. I'm, I'm not the, I'm the interviewee. So you're supposed Isn't... to be, you're supposed to be talking a lot. It's weird though, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's so cool. And I, I was just talking to somebody. I can't remember who it was. Somebody was just talking about the Save Our Sages stuff that uh, Adam was doing. So that's such a cool idea. Um, I love to hear that. But um, yeah. so talking about your show. So had the idea for the show. How did you go about kind of getting it started, kind of the production of it? What, how did you get going? So you had the idea. What was next? Yeah, I will say this was one of those things that like blessings. Um, I hate to say like hashtag blessed, but it was it was a weird cosmic thing. I had that conversation. I was like, okay, maybe I'll start. I started kind of getting stuff together. Um, I did one in like a friend's basement and I was like, this is kind of cool, but I, I need like equipment. I need, you know what I mean? Yeah, the yeah. vision in my head, I don't like to do things small. Sure. If you, I don't know if you saw Yada Fest, but <laughs> I, I just, I've always been like a big idea person. If it's going to happen, yeah. it's big or nothing, you know? Yeah. So when, oh gosh, when I did, um, Oh my gosh, I'm thinking so hard. Sorry. You'll have to cut this out because I'm like blinking right now. Repeat your question. Um, so you had the idea. What was kind of the next step? How did you get rolling on it? How do you know? I guess it is a production. Like you've got, I mean, the camera cuts between people. Like, how did you know what to do? How did you that kind of stuff? How did you get okay, going? Cool. So I had an idea. I'm friends with um, well, at the time we were like pretty close. Uh Cody Lonergan and Jimmy Vo. Um, I don't even know how we became friends. I think literally just going to the bar that Cody managed. Um, I would just go there and we would talk and hang out. And same with Jimmy Vo. He owns at uh, Kangaroo Hydro Farms. Okay. Um, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, they're both great dudes, commu- um, connected to the community. But they started um, kind of doing all the events for Oddfellow. They just got the building. Um, I don't. I don't want to say what their role is because I can't remember, but <laughs> you know, it's important. <laughs> like they're basically in charge. Sure. So I went there and I knew that the space was empty because COVID, they couldn't host any events. So I was like, hey man, I went in very sheepishly, sheepishly and was like, hey dude, since this is empty and it's really pretty, would you mind if I came in and like set my ring light up and my camera and then had like a, like a little, and just interview people? And they were like, yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, you know, I just got the confidence to do this, you know? So I was like, Hey, can I, uh, you mind? And they were like, no, that sounds really cool. We like that. And I was like, really? And they said, yeah, we also have a kitchen and a bar here though. Why not utilize that? And I was like, "Mm, wait, what? And they're like, yeah, you could do this and this and this, and then we could do, and they started like building. And I was like, I couldn't do what? And I was like, I don't cook. I don't know. Like the bartender thing. I was like, okay, I've done that plenty. I was like cooking. I was like, oh, I'm gonna look like an idiot. I don't know anything. Um, I was worried. And I just like, I was like, I don't know chefs. I don't know. You know what I mean? Right. So it was kind of, I was taken aback. And then they were like, we'll take care of that. You get the music, whatever. And so I was like, okay. But I was also kind of in the back of my mind. I was like, how am I going to do this? It's a lot of work. Um, and for my, one of my guests, I was talking to a friend, excuse me. Um, Connor is his name. Uh, Connor from Junior Retreat. Also, if you go to Reverie, he makes your coffee. Shout yeah. out Connor, he's the best. Uh, I talked to Connor and about doing your retreat, which I still need to have them on the show. Cause originally it was like, hey, Connor, he's like, you wanna, could I interview you for this like thing I'm doing? He goes, yeah, that'd be really cool. What is it? I was telling him about it. I was like, I think it's gonna be the show, da da da. Mm-hmm. He was like, that's really interesting. He goes, you should come to this meeting. And I was like, what meeting? He goes, me and my friends are meeting about, uh, we're starting a media company. And oh, I was wow. like, I was like, well, what? It's called Sunspeak Studios. Look them up. They're wonderful. Okay. Yep. But he was like, right now, like we're starting to come to the meeting. So I came to the meeting, kind of felt it out. And they were like, we want to do your show. And I was like, whoa. I was like, dude, I was like, I don't have any money. I was like, I'm right. broke. I, yeah. You know, I just came out of the pandemic. I was employed for unemployed for a lot of that. And not in a way where it's like, I got unemployment. Sure. Like it was um, a series of unfortunate events there. Um. <laughs> But <laughs> I was like, dude, I can't like, oh, thank you. But no. And they were like, don't worry about it. That's cool. Like, yeah. And Cody and Jimmy were like, don't worry about it. And they were like, don't worry about it. It's all going to get figured out. And by, I don't even know how, um, everything fell into place so well. People were available at the right time. We did everything, you know, at the right time. So I basically, Sunspeak Studios was my crew. Cody, um, Lonergan and Jimmy Vo, they were my freaking partners in crime. Um, everything has fell together. And at the end, we we're like, why don't we throw like a big party to celebrate it? Yeah. And so we did. And we, I remember a very special moment of Yada Fest because um, my stubborn self was like, I'm going to do it on my own. 
don't do that. <laughs> um, I was like, I'm gonna do it on my own. So I planned everything on my own, which was, it was, I mean, I've planned shows in college and beyond. So I've done a lot of stuff, but it was, it was a lot. And I was very stressed. I'm not going to lie to you. And I was, you know, when you go to a, an event and you have a bunch of different people to talk to, to know what's going on, mm-hmm. they had me. Yeah, and yeah, so. Jimmy was doing the kitchen and uh, Cody was doing bar, killing it at bar. We ran out of alcohol. Like it was killing insane. It. Yeah. yeah. So there was a point in where I was like fixing four, pro- about four or five problems at once. And um, a guy comes up to me I'm from the front door and goes, Hey, the, t- the tickets aren't working. I was like, I was like, another thing. Yeah. I was like, That's okay. I was like, what? I was like, what's going on? And he was like, he was like, wait, look at it. And I was like, I don't, okay. And I was kind of just like trying to be nice. But I was like, okay, I was like, what, what's going on? And I, right. he goes, shows me his phone. And I was like, well, what does that say? And he goes, it's sold out. Oh my you gosh. sold out. And I was like, I sold out. And I, I'm not gonna, I start tears immediately. I was like, it's sold out. And there was this nice older gentleman in the corner who was like waiting to go down to smoke. And he had been like, kind of seeing me from afar being like, I just kept running into him. And he was like, Hey, doing a good job, kid. And I'm like, thanks dude. And then he was there then and he goes, Hey, he goes, told you you're doing a good job. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. It was makes it all it worth was, it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was the best moment. It was so nice to see like almost a year's worth of work from the vagabond patio saying, Oh, this is silly. No one's going to care to literally having a sold out show. My first festival in Wichita, I was I'm blown away. And the fact that people still come up to me and say, are you Yada girl? Or are you Yada fest girl? They're like, Hey, when's the next cool. one? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, oh my gosh. It helped me get on uh, Nana who helps or Nana who does fest of ICT. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, Nana, yeah, wonderful Nana's guy. Awesome. Yeah. So me doing, um, <laughs> yeah, I saw him the day and he said that, um, Yada fest was the first outing he had with his wife, just a date night in a long, you know what it's like to have yeah. kids. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the first time in a long time. He goes, it was the most fun I've had. And I don't know how long. That's and incredible. so now I love that. Yeah. Because of that, now I'm going to be hosting shop and grab. Yeah. So I'll be doing that. I'm super excited for that too. It's just cool to see everyone come together, you know? Yeah. It's cool. And it's also cool to see what like the doors open up from that. Like you would have never expected not to hit you up about hosting another, a, a completely yeah. separate event from that. That's super cool. I don't even know who he was. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'd say, yeah, go piggyback ahead. off of that, yeah. if anyone, if you have an idea and you're like, I kind of want to do it and you feel passionate about it and you feel stupid, just don't, just do it. Even if you feel stupid. I felt stupid. I still feel stupid doing stuff sometimes, you know? Like I've done a million interviews and I was so nervous for this, but I do interviews all the time, you know? It's just pushing through because every time like you get better and things get easier and it's fun and you never, ever, ever know what door is going to open. I think my favorite time of the creator is that sometimes you got to close a door to open a window. Um, and sometimes you got to, you know? Yeah. True yeah. story. True story. Um, tell me a little bit more about Oddfellow Hall. Like how many people does it hold? Um, is that where you're going to continue to do season two? Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Oddfellow. So Oddfellow is really beautiful. It has a really rich history. If you ever get a chance to look into that, um, they basically, it was one of the first places where you could welcome um, uh, immigrants and just anyone new to Wichita. This is like 1800s, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's a mm-hmm. long time ago. Um, and if you walk through, you can see there's like a place where they would provide clothes for you, a place for you to wash up, a place for you to sign your papers and get it, um, your land. So mm-hmm. it'd be like, here's your plot yeah. of land, which is yeah. very cool. Um, so it's always, Oddfellow's history is kind of it's also, it's one of those things that didn't bring me to it, but it's helped me stay, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, their history is exactly what I want. I want everyone to come in and feel welcomed and taken care of, you know, yeah. I got to wash your feet. I'll wash your feet. You know, <laughs> I want you to be, yeah, like I want you to be, I want you to feel good there. You know, my biggest yeah. thing is I want you to feel like, I want to feel like you're not in Wichita for a second, or at least you're, you yeah. know, you're in a different world and odd fellow you've been there, right? I actually haven't. No, I've been, I need to, I need to come by. I know. I know. <laughs> I, okay. I will. I mean, anytime, just let me know. I'll, I'll literally take you there. It's great. Yeah. We'll um, we can check it out for sure. It's beautiful. Well, we're, it's beautiful. We're, we're working on figuring out some, uh, some other events later this year, hopefully this year. Um, and that's definitely like towards the top of my list of places I want to check out and see if it'll work out. So it's, and they're, they're going to be, well, I don't know if they've announced this. 
I'm so conflicted. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I won't say exactly everything, but I do know that they're expanding. So oh, nice. there Good. are, there's stuff happening. That's, it's really cool. It's really cool. I got to see kind of some of it and I'm mm-hmm. very excited, but I think it, I want to say it holds 350. Okay. I want to say that I could be wrong, but it's around 350. Um, it's, pretty it's big. just, it's a beautiful ballroom knowing what all it's been is crazy. Uh, at one point it was like a church uh, community center and they had basketball goals up. So that place has been through a lot. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Very but cool. yeah, it, I'm trying to think. I think that's all. Yeah. Um, did I answer the question fully? Yes, you did. I just okay. had a pop up. If it, uh, if we get cut off, we'll set up a new meeting. Mm. It says mm. we have 10 minutes left, but uh, I just saw that. We'll see about that. Um, <laughs> uh, so um yada the yada show yada fest season two what's going to be different how are you improving it's got to keep getting bigger what are you doing different this year oh gosh so honestly just a lot of it is sunspeak kind of honing in on their skills uh they are incredible so it's really cool because they started when i started Mm -hmm. so seeing them grow has been so cool they i mean just with sound with um picture um it's really hard to capture all of that especially if you've ever recorded a live band that stuff is not easy connor Mm -hmm. connor kills that so shout out to him but it's such learning and growing with them um season two is going to be hopefully more refined that's what i'm hoping for just kind of first season we're learning second season obviously we're always learning but i think kind of more refined like we kind of got into our groove yeah um it's we haven't even released season two and I'm already excited for season three because we've learned so much, you yeah. know, I'm like, I'm eager to get out there and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. I will say the way we're going to be releasing it, it's going to be different. Um, it's going to be shorter segments, uh, kind of more consumable, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, I love my show to death, but, uh, kind of just, you know, you have to, I've been a social media manager and stuff, just making it more consumable for people. It's kind of going to be our thing. Yeah. It's really it's, you know, it's incredibly hard to hold anyone's attention. And so we have to be creative with how we pull people in. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of, kind of is that, I think my approach the first season was I did it. Do you want to look at it? No, it's fine. You know, I was kind of like, "Eh." and now I'm like, Hey, this is my thing. And I'm proud of it. I'm sorry. My headphones keep like moving because my jaw, but yeah, it's kind of just my second season is or our second season, not just me. It's just kind of more refined. We're trying to figure out how to, you know, move on from a lot of stuff that we did the first time that we were like, oh, it wasn't it. Also, I don't know if, do you ever watch, you watch these back, right? To edit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not, if you've seen this interview, I have learned a lot about myself. (laughs) (laughs) I am a hair toucher. I am a face toucher. I talk with my hands. So kind of even learning that stuff has been very humbling Mm -hmm. and you just learn, you learn your fallback words. I'm not going to say it, but there is a few fallback words that I look back and I'm like, Oh my gosh, I said it 10 times during this episode. Oh, I know I do that too. It's tough. Yeah. I do it now. This is my 64th episode or something of doing the podcast. So that's incredible. it's just how it goes. Yeah. You'll learn. Yeah. I might, I might learn someday. Yeah. Oh. I'm kind of like some of it's charm, you know, it's like, I'm going to take this as like, this is who I am right. and others. I'm like, okay, I should probably work on that. <laughs> yeah, sure. How many episodes was season one? Uh, so I think seven's when our lucky number. So seven episodes. So I mean, seven musicians, uh, seven bartenders oh. and seven, uh, chefs. Yeah. That, that's the crazy part to me. So we, I do this podcast, which is kind of the long form, which you're correct. It is very hard to keep people's attention, but honestly, as like selfishly, a lot of this is for me because I really enjoy these conversations and like getting to know people that are doing cool stuff better. And if people yes. listen cool, that's like a, an extra benefit and we can get that kind of the word out about your guys' projects. But really a lot of it's for me. Um, but then we also have our Wichita Life talk show, um, which mm-hmm. my buddy Faola does. And yeah. uh, it's like, we, what did we do? I have a funny time? story about Faola. Okay. We'll get to that in one second. I, uh, so yes. last year we did, we, it, it was a ton, but we did 24 episodes. So like two per month for the year. And that was very difficult to do, but that was only yeah. one guest per episode. So I can't imagine trying to coordinate like the three different people. Like, are you recording that all in the same night? Like that's, that just seems like a lot to get that many people to schedule so, something and get it rolling. I'm glad that you recognize that one. 
Um, so every single episode we have to find, so Oddfellow Hall is an event venue. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a day where they don't have anything scheduled. Difficult. Yeah. Um, everything's opening up. So find a day that don't have anything scheduled. And then I have to find um, a day that works with the chef, um, the bartender or mm -hmm. whatever, and the musicians. And some yeah. of the musicians aren't from here. Uh, some of them, you know, so it is tough. And I'm, I'm basically in charge of coordinating all of it, being like, hey, do you have them? And there's been times where we get there and then someone, ha someone can't be there. And so we have to just figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you have it's not like a small operation. You know what I mean? Right. Like right now, I set up like my microphone and you know all this. Yeah. And this is it takes a little bit of work, but it's all on me. When I have a whole crew, you should see. I think I post oh, pictures man. online, maybe. Yeah. But we have actual like industrial lights. We have um, we're like you know lobbed up with our mics mm -hmm. um hidden. We have we have to move all the furniture. Um, every single time because they have events so we have to those right. huge heavy it is good furniture <laughs> but we have to do that we have to move the fuck it, the huge mat like it's just it's crazy yeah. so it is a lot of work but I it. coming back i do love um Fayola. yes yes he i saw him on i think on, on one of your things. And I was mm -hmm. like, that dude looks so familiar. I was like, I don't think I've ever met him though. And I remembered I have been to club rodeo one time in my life. <laughs> yeah. One, cause one of my younger friends turned 20 or I think she's like 19, 20, 21. Yeah. And she was like, I want to go. And we were all the older ones like, we're not going to do that. Um, I would say no shade, but dude, that place sucks. I guess I mean, we went if you there a like lot it, in college, but it was like it. It seemed like it was always like the last possible resort, but we always ended up there <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> Well, I will say it's guaranteed to be lit. It's just not the kind of lit that I want to be around. You know what sure. I mean? Oh, yeah. I also, I'm coming from a place where I went to K-State and then came back. And so I was already over that. I sure. went to my shitty bars in Manhattan, you know? Yep, yep. yep. One time I got back, was, eh. so I was there, not wanting to really be there. But, you know, drinking, talking to people. And all of a sudden I see this guy in the corner of my eye and I, I don't know what he said. He said something to me and I say something back. And then he goes, he goes, I like your energy. He goes, you want a shot? And I was like, yeah sure and we talked and he was just i had the best experience um just you know him oh yeah he's, he's very the energetic he's, the he's very infectious ever, yeah. yeah yeah and usually like when dudes are at the bar and they're buying you shots you know you get like kind of like oh dude what is this i have never had a more like church vibe in a oh, bar for sure oh yeah exactly <laughs> he, he brings that all the time yeah yes he was just like how are you doing what you're doing like what's your what's your story what's going on and i ended up talking to him um, I don't even remember, but I remember like at, we think we added each other on something. I'm sure it was a probably Snapchat or something stupid. Yeah. Um, and then I literally kind of forgot about him, you know, one time at a bar. And yeah. then I saw the interviews pop up and I was like, it unlocked a memory. And I was like, oh my that's gosh, so that random well, guy at that bar. I'm going to text him right after this and tell him to keep an eye out for this podcast. So that's yes. hilarious. It's even funnier because we both are doing similar things. Yeah. So I was like, what a funny thing that this man approached me and said, I love your energy. And I was like, you too. And then we both end that's up so doing funny. this. We're both you killing know? it with talk shows. Yeah, that's amazing. Yes. I love, that. that's yes. cool. I love it too because he brings a very different vibe than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a very different tone, but it's one that I love. He's yeah he's his own person and i i freaking love it i am mm -hmm. i don't want to say edgier because that sounds kind of pompous or i'm not like i'm not uh, but you know what i mean <laughs> i i'm not at the local church on sunday you know with my fully you know matching sure. suit yep, yep i get it yep I get yeah it. All righty, we are back. So um, right now we get into a section where uh, these are kind of some questions I cherry picked from other podcasts I like, um, and I ask these ones to everybody. Um, and I usually don't give them ahead of time. So kind of put you on the spot. So if you need a minute to think, that's okay. fine. Um, what is something you often recommend to people? So books, podcasts, movies, in your case, music, maybe what is something you often recommend to people? Therapy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number one. Therapy. Yeah. Uh, I went today. It was great. Um, I think my, so my job outside of everything I do is I'm a behavioral and cognitive therapist for people who suffer traumatic brain injuries. So I help um, people re basically regain the skills that they lost with their brain injury um, yeah. just so they can become independent again. Um, it's really wonderful. I love it. But also, yeah, outside of that, um, I go to therapy. I suggest therapy to everyone. Uh, therapy is super stigmatized, even during this time where people are saying it. Um, right. 
Yeah, I think people think that you need to have this like huge crisis or something that's really, you know, you have to wait until the boiling point, but mm -hmm. really I'm doing fine. But I had, you know, my brain was kind of foggy. I was like, oh, I have a lot of stuff going on and I kind of want to work it out. So I went um, to my therapist and we talked and today she had kittens. It was great. <laughs> I was with kittens while I talked. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. It's just, and then I felt better and, you know, I just, that's, Beyond obviously music, movies, all that stuff, I will recommend you play. I will make you a playlist. You know what I mean? I'm one of those people. But uh, the first thing I would say, like as soon as you asked, I was like therapy. I recommend oh, it to that's everyone. Awesome. I don't think anyone's recommended that yet. Um, I guess how would you recommend somebody get started if they wanted to start going to therapy? I mean, first question is going to be the obvious: do you have insurance or not? And that's going to really depend. That's going to kind of decide where we're going to go. Yeah. Has the people who take insurance often, or if it's like there's privatized um, therapy groups and then there's uh, uh, non-privatized. So sure. the one that I go to, um, she's wonderful. She does a pay scale. So basically it's whatever you can afford. Um, okay. And there's a lot more of those out there than I think people realize because they hear therapy and they're like, oh, so I'm have to pay someone hundreds of dollars to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no, like you, there's people who are work with you and um, it'll be really cheap. My therapy is super cheap. Um, there's also, oh gosh, I hope I don't lose it. There's also um, people who have gone to therapy and they're like, oh, that guy sucked or, you know, right. that girl sucked. And the thing I tell all of my friends is when you go out and talk to people, do you like everyone you meet? Do you like everyone you meet, Landon? No. I, mean, I try to, but yes. yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. we're pretty, we're extroverted. I try to. Yeah. But there's some people that you yeah, like or not like is probably not a good word, but sure. vibe with, you know, yeah, people yeah. that you feel comfortable with. I don't feel comfortable with every person I meet. I try to make them feel comfortable though, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you go to therapy and it doesn't work out, it doesn't mean that therapy is bad. It might just mean that person you don't you don't vibe i hate right. using the word vibe but you know what no, i mean it's a, i think that's the best word to use yeah i agree yeah and it's it's really important to find that person i went through i went through a few but the one i have now um she she's just she's different she yells and she's loud and um she curses with me it's you know it's it's very comfortable i need a very informal setting for something like that um because like a very formal office setting with like the white walls that makes me cringe it makes me not feel good hers is has couches and all these trinkets yeah. and it feels very homey for me personally that's what works for me if you need like a doctor's office setting to feel like okay this is what it is then do that you know yeah. I think people see it as a black and white step you know step by step kind of thing and it's not therapy is personal um to each person so that's what I that's what I recommend and great answer yeah you have no idea how free and light you feel after talking about things, working through it and just letting it go. I, yeah, I would not be as confident and happy as I am now if I didn't. Cool. That's, that's good that's to hear. That's a great truth. answer. Great answer. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have a favorite failure in any aspect of your life? Ooh, favorite failure. Gosh, that's a really good question. I feel like I fail all the time. Uh, like in the best, like, you know, best way. Yeah. I would say my favorite failure probably college. I graduated, but I did not get a good, my GPA was not great. <laughs> and in high school, my GPA was like top, top. Sure. Um, I think it was like a, like a 3.999. Like yeah. it was, I was, you know, I was up there. Um, but when I went to college, it just kind of, I, I realized after college I have ADHD, which definitely changed everything. <laughs> it made me realize like, that's why I couldn't like keep up with some stuff. You know what I mean? Um, not even keep up, but keep interest. Sure. Like, this stuff is boring and I just wouldn't do it. Um, so I think kind of letting go of the expectation, not the expectation, but I want to say this very carefully. I put a lot of my worth into my grades and my achievements. And so going to college and not being able to meet those requirements that I'd set for myself, mm -hmm. um, it opened my eyes to the fact that it doesn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? Unless mm -hmm. obviously, Hey, if you're going to school after, or, you know, there's a lot of factors in here. Don't take <laughs> sure. my, I'm, my, my financial word is, or educational advice. <laughs> no, my word is not law, but I will say, um, I learned, I, I learned how to give myself a break, you know, and mm -hmm. finding out later I have ADHD years later, I was like, Oh, it makes sense now. But at the time I was like, I am, I was like, I, I just don't, I didn't think I knew anything. I thought that I just couldn't keep up with people. And mm -hmm. so that failure alone, I'm kind of, 
I, people have asked like, oh man, you wish you would have got diagnosed sooner in some regards. Yes. But I'm glad that I went through college and I struggled because it taught me, it, I don't know. It taught me a lot. It taught me how yeah. to give myself a break. So I think that was my favorite failure was just my grades in college. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's encouraging uh, for other people that might be struggling that, like you said, it doesn't matter. You'll be all right. So it doesn't. I, I found out today that next year is my 10 year high school reunion like oh my god I, I was just <laughs> there last year I know I know the feeling <laughs> it's weird right yeah. like 10 years I sound like an old person but 10 years went by way too fast no I agree 100 percent. I, I know the feeling I'm, I'm turning 30 this year and we're That's almost, exciting. it's all downhill from there so no it's uphill everyone tells me your 30s are like everyone I talk to that's older I always ask them like especially in their 30s I'm like what do you wish you knew in your 20s and I love hearing what people told me but a lot of women are like your 30s get so much better your 20s you're learning and you never stop but your 30s you get more concrete you're like wait you know you settle into who you are I'm excited for that yeah for sure absolutely um what is your definition of success Hmm. that's a hard one I will say I've been struggling with that one a lot lately yeah uh because I think it changes all the time. I would say my my higher self or the self that's, you know, I don't know, my higher self, I'll say that. Um, she would say it's just being content with where you're at. I think that's success when you can take a breath and just look around and be content, not, not want or need anything more, not um, feel like you have less. I think that's success is just being content. A lot of the times I think we chase happiness and we chase the excitement. And even though those things are really, really wonderful and they're great and, you know, we get all these cool feelings and dopamine, Mm -hmm. um, it's not attainable to stay like that. You know, you can't be, um, can't be at Pike's peak all the time. You know, you gotta, gotta come down and be on earth and, and enjoy it. Just enjoy being. I think a lot of the time with the world we have now, it's really hard to just sit and be. So I think my version of success would be just doing that. And I would say right now I'm not there. I'm stressed a lot. I have multiple jobs. I'm always running around. So I think my success with literally just being able to uh, have more time for myself and enjoy that time. Yeah, I agree with that. That makes sense. Yeah, oh, it makes complete sense. Um, do you have a life motto you live by or tell me about a life motto you live by or what is some of the best advice you've ever received? Mm. I think so. I have tattoos of mine because I need reminders. Mm. Um, I have this one. I don't think you can you see it. It's a little yeah. wave. Yeah. Um, I got this really cheap ring from some store. It was a little wave there. Um, and I was having a I was having a really hard time after college because I felt like a failure because I was like, well, my grades aren't that good. I don't even know if I like my degree. You know, I moved back to Wichita and I was just kind of like, I don't know what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember talking to my mom and. I was like, I'm, I was like, I'm a failure. I'm, you know, I was like, why do you even like me? <laughs> My mom was like, whoa, you know, hold on. I was 20, what, 24 or something, 23 at the time. I don't even know how old you are when you get out of college. I was young. I'm still mm-hmm. young. Mm-hmm. My mom was like, girly, she's like, it comes in waves. It's always going to come in waves. She goes right now. She goes, you're drowning. She goes, you're trying to keep your head above water. She goes, but you're going to be surfing soon. You're going to be floating soon. She's like, so just remember, she goes, you're, it's going to happen again too. And I was like, what well, doesn't make me feel better? She was like, that's real. Um, shout out to my mom for always be, keeping it real. Um, as much as she encourages me, she also makes sure that I know, you know, what's the, the realistic yeah. points of life. For sure. Um, so say, yes, just, uh, who's that Dory or something just keep swimming, but like, yeah, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And I have another one. Um, it's right here. Uh, I can't see it, but it's like a little, um message bubble and it says i have to look at it now keep moving (laughs) um that sounds really simple it's from a long text that a friend sent me during a hard time and basically keep moving just means um when things get really tough and you want to kind of go in your shell and just disconnect uh no progress can happen so it's just keep showing up if not for yourself for everything else you're doing um so when i feel bogged down from depression anxiety whatever i have that day I remind myself you know comes in waves so there's a there's hope you know light at the end mm-hmm. of the tunnel and just to keep moving like you're going to get through this you just you're not going to get through it if you sit and sulk though 
you know? Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. Uh, my phone background, my lock screen is my two daughters. And then uh, my like home screen is a picture of one of my older daughter Nori's books. And it says, keep going, never stop, keep going, never stop, keep going, never stop. So same theme, oh. same theme. But <laughs> I was like reading that to her when I'm like, wow, that that is way too like profound for like a little kid's book. But so it's I, good. I it's that. planting seeds for her though. That's it is. really it's awesome. wonderful. Yeah, that's really cool. Also, uh, isn't it cool that we can like read a little kid's book at this age and still find inspiration from it? For real, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite part of Wichita or what is a hidden gem in Wichita? You mentioned the Vagabond, but what is a hidden gem that other people might not know about? And also you missed, mentioned Oddfellow, which a lot of people probably don't know about. But Hidden gem. Oh, God. The thing that, how well. Mm, there's one that's, I was trying to think if I can get in trouble for it. I don't think I can. It's like not very illegal. <laughs> there was one. Hypothetically, there is one in Wichita. Hypothetically, there could be. I think actually now it's not, which is really sad. Hypothetically, you used to be able to go to a building downtown that's near like the, you know, the bridge above that like kind of curves near the, mm -hmm. kind of near the station. So there's a building around there where you used to be able to go in. Um, it's like a private residence, but there would always be one door unlocked. You have to know which door. You could go in, go to the elevator, go to the penthouse. Um, it would open. And so there was like a little space before you go actually into the penthouse. You could go in, you go to the left to like the janitor area. And I know I used to get into some stuff. So if you go in there, you'd climb, climb up these stairs and you'd have to climb up a ladder and you have to open the hatch and you'd go on the roof and it you just see all of Wichita and cool. I mean at this, at this point I was a really good kid too at this point like I'm not that I'm not a I'm not a bad <laughs> kid but like you know kids are like I yeah. never smoked I never drank before I was like you know legal you know sure. I never did any of that um so this is time like it was very wholesome we would just adventure and we would go take pictures and that was that was my favorite hidden gem uh for a long time because it would just be like hey you want to go to the roof we'd be like that's yeah cool. so then everyone cool. would meet yeah. downtown yeah I think that's one of the special parts of Wichita that I'm like, oh, every summer um, we would just come and do that. And something special about going on adventures with your friends like that, oh, like, yeah. you're, you're not supposed to do it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of feels bad. It's also really cool. But as far as hidden gems that are legal and that you can still do, I would say, honestly, the new Tiki Bar. That one, I, I mean, it's like kind of popping off, but I feel like not a lot of people like go-go, you know? And I tell people now, I feel like a lot of people are like, we have that. I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. And it's sick. Actually, uh, not was it my last podcast? Either the last podcast or two podcasts ago, uh, a friend of mine, Graham, recommended the La, La Ventonic, right? Mm -hmm. La yeah, Ventonic, yeah. yeah. He, he recommended it as well. And that was actually, honestly the first time I'd, I think I'd heard of it, but I'd never, I still haven't been. But we tried to go, I don't know, a month ago when my brother was in town, but it was like, booked up like it was it was crazy you just so had like, reservations yeah i was like yeah. i didn't i didn't realize that it was like nine o'clock we were trying to go i'm like okay never mind it's it's busy but yeah i need to go there it sounds like it's a pretty cool place it's very cool so they based it see there's no signs outside right um, which is right the craziest to, part yeah it's right next to donut hole so that's why i kind of thought hidden gem as well mm -hmm. um but there i actually was hired there and then i ended up not doing it because i was like i need to step away from the service industry <laughs> sure. but um alex thomas a really wonderful guy um he hired me and we kind of talked went into the place and he kind of told me the stories about what inspired it and there's a bar called dash dash dot i believe in chicago i want to say um and it's a speakeasy tiki lounge mm, and it cool. kind of inspired them yeah and they really wanted to do a speakeasy kind of thing which is what they do with like the uh outside they have the two uh, fire lanterns mm -hmm. and no mm -hmm. signs so it's cool yeah um that one oh it made me think of something else um that one is just i don't know it was really cool i was seeing how they pulled from it, it was really awesome and if you ask them like how they got the bar the like physical bar if you look mm -hmm. it's like one huge slab which is mm -hmm. the decorating is crazy in there sure. so yeah go there check That's it awesome. out yeah absolutely yes also have you been to dockham I have been to Dockham. Dockham's really okay, cool. cool. Yeah, Dockham's Dockham awesome. just Highly feels recommend cool to people. go into. Oh, yeah. It's been a couple of years. I need to go back. I, I probably haven't been since COVID, so I need to go back. You yeah. should. It's very cool. You feel so fancy going in there, too. It's like you walk really down do. some stairs and knock on a door, and they're like, hey, you're trying to come in. I'm like, yeah, I want to drink in here. <laughs> exactly. It's I want to cool. give you my money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything that, which, that you wish Wichita had that it doesn't? Or what is what's missing from Wichita? What would you improve about Wichita? 
so excited to talk about this. Um, um, uh, public, public active spaces, public app, I think that's what it's called, um, open active spaces. There's a term for it in um, like city planning mm -hmm. that I'm sad that I'm not remembering right now. I want to say it's active spaces. So basically it's spaces in a city where it's free to go, but there are places to sit. Um, and it's like active, meaning if you look at it, you're like, oh, I feel welcome. I can sit here and I can sure. draw, I can do whatever. And there's no payment. So we've had a few of those. Um, Nasker Park went in, which is a really great one. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have, oh gosh, I guess we have the chain link, but it's closed sometimes because mm -hmm. they, you know, yeah. so we used to have that area. Yeah. Um, and we had plans. I was part of, um, I was behind the Make Wichita Win campaign. I helped with that. Mm -hmm. um, I did social media for that. And this is years ago, right before COVID. Mm -hmm. That was the job that I lost because of COVID. Oh, <laughs> so sad. It was so fun talking to people and about city planning though. Never thought I'd be so passionate about city <laughs> planning, but seeing how like so many options for Wichita to grow. Uh, if you don't have spaces where people can go downtown and just be, people aren't going to do it. You know, we can't always, especially right now, people can afford to just go into places and constantly spend money. Right. And especially with this good weather, like you want a place where you go chill. I went to Nasco Park, I think, it's be, be a year ago now. I just had like, you know, the memories pop on your phone. Mm -hmm. It's like one year ago. Mm -hmm. I went to uh, Bon Me for, um, mm -hmm. oh, it's another hidden gem. You've been to Bon Me, Vietnamese um, yeah, yeah. sandwich mm -hmm. shop. Mm -hmm. oh, the best coffee, the such I good sandwiches. Coffee, but yeah, yeah. You never, have you ever had Vietnamese coffee? Like in general? Uh, not theirs, but I have had it, I've had it one other time. But yeah, I need to try theirs. Uh, that's, I'm like, I'm like, I can solve all the world problems. Like that <laughs> stuff gets me going. <laughs> but yeah, just public open active spaces, public active spaces. Yeah. Um, I, I want Wichita to have them so bad. I know a lot of people have tried. Um, it's hard to get things going here. Yeah. Um, it's my biggest critique of Wichita is just even we'll have a bunch of like support and like we're really ready to go. And then it seems to fall apart at some point. And I don't, I don't really know what that is. I've been trying to figure it out for years, but oh, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I've kind of, uh, I've seen the same thing. So Hopefully we can get too, over the hump. Yeah. Get it rolling. Yeah. Which has so much potential. I've heard so many people recently. I went to Tulsa and there, I met a few people like an art show. Uh, it makes me sound so pretentious. I went to an art <laughs> show in Tulsa. But my cousin had an art show in Tulsa. And uh, I met some people and they were like, oh, I've actually been to Wichita. And I was like, on purpose. <laughs> and they yeah. were like, yeah, I'm like, well, go for work or for XYZ. Yeah, yeah. They were like, I was surprised at how much cool stuff there was. And I'm like, yeah, it's actually a cool city. Mm -hmm. I think also Tulsa is growing like crazy too. I think yeah. Tulsa is going to be the new Denver, Austin. Yeah. They so. have what the, the gathering place or whatever it is, mm, yeah. downtown or mm -hmm. wherever it is. But um, to your point about people visiting Wichita and like being surprised by how cool it was, um, mm -hmm. a lady messaged me just a couple days ago. I think her name is Jasmine. She's a photographer in town. Um, but uh, the Lion King was just in town for a couple of weeks on the yeah. like Broadway, Wichita or whatever, and mm -hmm. uh, Century too. And so Nala, the young, the girl who played young Nala in the Lion King, her mom had reached out and said, Hey, we have one day off during the two week period. Can you take some like dance photos of my daughter? And so they like got to know her daughter hung out with this photographer uh, with the Lion King. And so mm -hmm. they got to know each other and like show each other around Wichita. And like, I think the whole cast was like surprised and they were all sad to leave because they love Wichita so much, which is heard, really cool uh, to hear. So I heard this. Okay. I heard the same thing. I was serving and I had young Simba come in and I had um, someone who plays in the band and mm -hmm. they said the same thing. I was like, it was cool to see people who've been so many places to right. be like, oh, exactly. this place is really cool. I had two, actually both people I served, they came in again because cool. they loved it That's so awesome. much. Yeah, but me, like also meeting little Simba, That's so professional. Cool. And he's, I was blown away by how good him and young Nala were. They were unbelievable for being, I don't I know how old they are, 10, 12, I don't even know how old they are, but yeah. they were incredible, yeah. I want to say like nine or 10, like yeah. eight, nine, 10. Yeah. They're young, young. It yeah. was, that was but awesome. I did hear though. He told me a funny story. Cause I was like, Oh, you must work a lot. And he was like him being like eight or eight, eight, nine or 10. He's very young. He just said, and he goes, well, there's child labor laws that limit me from working. And so I'm only one of them. He goes, but I, I very much enjoy it. I was like, do you want, yes. I, Cause I only found out because I said, Oh, does he got the bill or you to his mom? She goes, he could do it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I was like, what? And I, I was like, uh, hey, buddy. I was like, what do you do? And he goes, he's literally, he's like on his laptop because he has to do school. He's doing this. He goes, oh, he's like, uh, I'm young Simba and Lion King. I was, <laughs> <No big deal. laughs> I was like, oh, 
<laughs> he was so, so casual about it. It was so great. That's so funny. But it is um, cool to see pl- things like that coming through Wichita. No, I agree. And because I guess back to kind of the open planning stuff, I think that's if Century, if or when Century 2 gets torn down, I think that's what people want to put there. Um, you said it. I said it. But well, what's, it's interesting to me because I think one of the arguments for tearing it down was always like, we can't get the big shows, right? Or at that's least a, that's, I that's what just, I understood. I was, but like we have Lion King, Hamilton's coming next year. I'm like, does it get bigger than those shows? Like I, if we were getting these, I guess I don't understand, which the stage did look a little small. Like it looked like they were a little cramped up there. And like, I don't know how bad it is behind the scenes that they have to deal with. And I've heard that's kind of an issue, but like we got the Lion King, like what's bigger than the Lion King for- Can I, can I fill you in just cause yes, I did do. the, yeah. um, did make Wichita win. So I kind of got yeah. to see the inside. Yeah. Um, I got literally, I don't know where it's at, but I literally have like a, a thick stuff. It's like a dissertation on century two. Sure. I got it from the save century two peeps. Mm-hmm. you know what if you're passionate about something cool for you you know i won't talk hey, i won't talk I, smack in any of that people can convince me either way so yeah let's hear it Same. if you can give me a solid argument the thing is with where they pull into the garages and mm-hmm. um, those trucks since it was built so long ago it is not big enough for mm-hmm. a lot of these newer trucks to go through and unload and so it's not practical for them to unload all the equipment and stuff and you know right. props all of that it's just there's not enough room and right. on like you're saying with the stage we had a bigger stage we could bring bigger bigger acts even though lion king is big hamilton is big that's great and i think a lot of the i think there's a big pull to bring them to prove that we can do it mm-hmm. which is you know <laughs> right, smart right. i like it yeah but they also know what they're doing. about it those shows aren't i mean they're big in a sense of like oh that's a really cool thing prominent but it's, yeah not necessarily big production yeah yeah yeah. yes prominent is an uh, yes you hit the nail on the head prominent but is it big because imagine having like sure I don't, I don't support the circus, but I'm trying to think, sure. you know, yeah. sorry, not to get political, but um, on a whole different rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, ADHD, man, it just going, but I don't know. Just like really big acts with like, you know, trapeze and all that stuff. Like, wouldn't yeah. it be cool to have like an aerial sort of thing, but we can't do that because there's not enough space. Sure. Cirque du Soleil and have you sat or something in those like chairs? Yeah. 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 I just, I yeah. mean, I don't want to. I'm only 27. This back isn't even that bad yet, but girl, <laughs> sitting in a whole show yep. and those those chairs, it's, it's a struggle. I get it. I get it. Um, I just have one also, more question. Can I say something? Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. Yes, please do. It's so ugly. It's so, it's just concrete everywhere. It's so, the blue top. I get it. It's pretty that, cool. That's the styling. iconic part of it. Yeah. Right. Yes. I think we Beyond could do that. like a do like a shrink down version of that as like an homage. Like have a big cool park or whatever we're gonna do there, and then have like a, I don't know. 50 foot wide blue rooftop looking thing that overhangs a picnic area or something i don't know that's literally what was one of the designs that they, they, um, they when they brought me? in what people are, what are they waiting for honestly you I, got they hired me a wrecking like, ball and give me a whiteboard <laughs> and we'll draw it up real quick honestly wichita life ict and yada 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 show we're gonna we're gonna collab uh for the tear down century two uh, I'm going to get a letter from safe century too about this. Um, I think actually you'll just get blocked. That's what they do on Facebook. Okay. I can handle that. They'll just block you. If you don't, if you say something against them. That's fair. Um, <laughs> what? Last question. What yes. does Wichita mean to you? Oh, everything. I'll talk. It's like a, I said, it's like an off and on relationship it means everything. Um, because, you know, sometimes I'm like, you just want to be like, what are you doing? You know, like wake up, you know, be, take care of people could say, I'm not going to get too political, but stuff that I see happening with WPD stuff that I see happening, um, just with our city council, it does not reflect the love. I know Wichita, Wichita people have for each other. You know, when I go out day to day and I talk to people, um, like serving, doing whatever people are like, wow, everyone here is so nice. Everyone here is so like loving and connecting. Um, and then I see people in charge, not, not acting on that, not doing that, mm-hmm. not making their decisions with love or with care for people. Mm-hmm. So which that to me means it means community love connectedness. Um, but I also look at it with a very critical eye, you know? Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If we don't do that, we can't, we can't learn and grow. Yeah. I don't think it's a, a- true love for your city if you didn't have that critical eye so i think that's that's needed yeah i think my i mean my friends aren't my friends unless they call me out of my shit you know exactly right exactly right 
Awesome. Where can people find more about you, more about Yada Fest, Yada, Yada, Yada Show? Where can people find it? Yes. Go to Yada, Yada, Yada. Wait. The yada 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 show.com, uh, Y A double D A on each of those. Um, we have a website, we have Instagram, Facebook, not Twitter, but we have all of those and we post our updates. And season two will be out in, I don't know when this is great to post this, but it'll be out um, in, it'll be out in May sometime, next couple of weeks. So, yep. Okay. Probably so middle, late May, yep. Late May, early June, um, we'll have the first episode released. Um, it's going to be super fun. We have Caleb Carnell on for our act. Love him. He's wonderful. Look him up. So I'm super excited and look awesome. out for Yada Fest. Cool. Yada Fest coming soon. Season two yes. coming soon. Courtney, thank you. This is fun. Have a good thank one you. and we will keep in touch. Oh, definitely. It's good to talk to you, Landon. You too, Courtney. See ya.